Are you ready to uncover the truth about FEMA's hidden secrets? In today's video, we delve into six critical pieces of information that FEMA doesn't want you to know. From covert operations within their facilities to undisclosed policies with potentially far-reaching consequences, we're lifting the veil on what FEMA has been keeping from the public. Number one, unacknowledged vulnerabilities. FEMA, despite its critical role in disaster response and relief efforts, faces numerous vulnerabilities that compromise its efficiency and effectiveness. These vulnerabilities range from bureaucratic red tape to inadequate resource allocation, all of which can significantly impede FEMA's ability to respond swiftly and adequately in times of crisis. One key vulnerability lies in FEMA's bureaucratic structure, which often leads to delays and inefficiencies in decision-making processes. The agency's hierarchical layers and complex approval procedures can slow down the deployment of resources and coordination of relief efforts, hindering the timely assistance needed by affected communities. Additionally, FEMA's reliance on federal funding and budget allocations poses a significant vulnerability. Inadequate funding can restrict the agency's capacity to pre-position supplies, maintain infrastructure, and conduct training exercises, limiting its ability to respond effectively to disasters of varying scales. Furthermore, FEMA's reliance on external partnerships for resource procurement and logistical support introduces vulnerabilities in supply chain management. Disruptions in these partnerships, whether due to geopolitical tensions, market fluctuations, or logistical challenges, can hinder FEMA's ability to access essential resources and deploy them to affected areas promptly. Another critical vulnerability is the limited scope of FEMA's mandate, which primarily focuses on natural disasters and emergencies. While the agency has expanded its responsibilities to include aspects of homeland security and emergency management, gaps remain in addressing emerging threats such as cyber attacks, pandemics, and climate change-induced disasters. Moreover, FEMA's reliance on traditional response frameworks may not adequately address the evolving nature of modern threats and hazards. The agency's focus on reactive rather than proactive measures leaves it vulnerable to emerging risks that require anticipatory planning and resilience building strategies. Addressing these vulnerabilities requires a multifaceted approach, including streamlining bureaucratic processes, securing stable funding sources, diversifying resource procurement channels, expanding the agency's mandate to cover emerging threats, and adopting a more proactive and adaptive approach to disaster management. Number two, questionable camp operations. Reports of questionable operations and conditions within FEMA camps have raised concerns about the adequacy and transparency of these facilities in providing assistance during emergencies. While FEMA camps are designed to offer temporary shelter and support to individuals affected by disasters, numerous instances of overcrowding, substandard living conditions, and inadequate provision of basic amenities have come to light. One significant issue is the overcrowding observed in many FEMA camps during periods of high demand. Limited capacity combined with a sudden influx of displaced individuals can strain resources and infrastructure, leading to cramped living conditions and heightened tensions among residents. Overcrowding not only compromises the comfort and dignity of those seeking refuge, but also increases the risk of disease transmission and safety concerns within the camp environment. Moreover, the lack of basic amenities such as clean water, sanitation facilities, and sufficient food supplies further exacerbates the challenges faced by individuals sheltering in FEMA camps. Inadequate provisioning of essential resources not only undermines the physical well-being of residents, but also undermines their sense of security and trust in the authorities responsible for their care. Additionally, the quality of accommodation and facilities within FEMA camps varies widely, with some sites failing to meet minimum standards of habitability. Reports of dilapidated infrastructure, unsafe living conditions, and insufficient medical care highlight the shortcomings of certain camps in providing a safe and dignified environment for displaced individuals. Furthermore, concerns have been raised about the lack of transparency and accountability in the operation of FEMA camps. Limited public access, restricted media coverage, and insufficient oversight mechanisms contribute to a lack of visibility into the day-to-day -day functioning of these facilities, raising questions about compliance with established guidelines and regulations. Addressing the issues surrounding FEMA camps requires a comprehensive approach that prioritizes the well-being 
and dignity of individuals seeking shelter during emergencies. This includes implementing measures to prevent overcrowding, ensuring adequate provision of essential resources and amenities, improving the quality and safety of camp infrastructure, enhancing transparency and accountability in camp operations, and promoting community engagement and participation in disaster response efforts. Number three, undisclosed surveillance tactics. FEMA's involvement in surveillance and monitoring activities goes beyond its primary role in disaster response. While these tactics are intended to enhance situational awareness and support decision-making during emergencies, the lack of transparency surrounding the extent and nature of FEMA's surveillance operations raises concerns about personal privacy and civil liberties. One aspect of FEMA's surveillance tactics is the use of technology for data collection and analysis. This may include monitoring social media channels, analyzing satellite imagery, and aggregating data from various sources to assess the impact of disasters and track the movement of affected populations. While these techniques can provide valuable insights for coordinating response efforts, they also raise questions about the scope of data collection and potential privacy implications for individuals. Furthermore, FEMA may collaborate with other government agencies, law enforcement entities, and private sector partners to gather intelligence and conduct surveillance activities. This could involve sharing information, conducting joint operations, or leveraging specialized capabilities to monitor specific threats or vulnerabilities. However, the lack of transparency surrounding these partnerships and the specific tactics employed can contribute to uncertainty and mistrust among the public. Another aspect of FEMA's surveillance tactics is the use of physical surveillance measures in disaster-affected areas. This may involve deploying personnel to conduct on-the-ground assessments, establish observation posts, or implement checkpoints to monitor access and movement within designated zones. While these measures are aimed at ensuring public safety and security, they also raise concerns about potential infringement on individual rights and freedoms, particularly in the absence of clear guidelines and oversight mechanisms. Moreover, the integration of surveillance technologies into FEMA's disaster response operations raises broader ethical and legal questions about the balance between security and civil liberties. The use of advanced monitoring tools such as drones, facial recognition technology, and geospatial tracking systems introduces new challenges in terms of data privacy, consent, and accountability. Ensuring that FEMA's surveillance activities are conducted in a lawful, transparent and proportionate manner is essential for upholding democratic principles and safeguarding individual rights. Number four, ambiguous resource distribution. The distribution of essential resources during crises is a fundamental responsibility of FEMA, encompassing items such as food, water, and medical supplies. However, the process of resource allocation has faced challenges including inefficiencies, inconsistencies, and allegations of favoritism. One issue with resource distribution is the lack of a standardized and transparent framework for allocation. Without clear guidelines and criteria, decisions regarding resource allocation may appear arbitrary or biased, leading to distrust among affected communities and stakeholders. Furthermore, the absence of transparent communication regarding the rationale behind resource allocation decisions can exacerbate perceptions of unfairness and exacerbate tensions during times of crisis. Moreover, logistical challenges can hinder the timely and equitable distribution of resources to affected areas. Factors such as transportation constraints, supply chain disruptions, and limited access to remote or hard to reach locations can delay the delivery of critical supplies, leaving communities vulnerable and exacerbating the impact of disasters. Additionally, competing demands for resources across multiple disaster-affected regions can further complicate the distribution process and strain FEMA's capacity to meet the needs of all affected populations adequately. Another challenge is ensuring accountability and oversight in resource distribution efforts. In the absence of robust monitoring and evaluation mechanisms, there is a risk of mismanagement, waste, and diversion of resources intended for disaster relief. Instances of corruption, fraud, and exploitation may undermine public trust in FEMA's ability to effectively allocate resources and respond to emergencies. Furthermore, disparities in resource allocation between different demographic groups and communities can exacerbate existing inequalities and vulnerabilities. Marginalized populations, including low-income households, minority groups, and rural communities, 
may face greater challenges in accessing essential supplies and services during emergencies, exacerbating disparities in health outcomes and resilience. Addressing these challenges requires a holistic approach that emphasizes transparency, accountability, and equity in resource allocation processes. This includes establishing clear criteria and guidelines for resource allocation, enhancing coordination and collaboration with local stakeholders and community-based organizations, investing in robust logistical infrastructure and capacity building efforts, and strengthening oversight mechanisms to prevent misuse and abuse of resources. Number five, contingency plans for extreme scenarios. FEMA's preparation for disaster scenarios encompasses a wide range of potential threats, but certain extreme events pose unique challenges for which contingency plans may not be fully disclosed. These events include nuclear incidents, large-scale natural disasters, and other catastrophic events that could have far-reaching consequences for public safety and national security. One aspect of FEMA's contingency planning involves assessing the potential impacts of extreme scenarios and identifying strategies to mitigate risks and enhance resilience. This includes conducting risk assessments, scenario modeling, and vulnerability analyses to anticipate the effects of various disaster scenarios and develop response plans accordingly. However, the complexity and uncertainty associated with extreme events may pose challenges in formulating comprehensive and effective contingency plans. Moreover, the nature of extreme scenarios often requires a multi-agency and multidisciplinary approach to preparedness and response. FEMA collaborates with federal, state, local, tribal, and territorial partners, as well as international organizations and private sector stakeholders to coordinate efforts and leverage resources in response to extreme events. This includes developing interoperable communication systems, coordinating resource allocation and deployment, and conducting joint exercises and training exercises to enhance coordination and collaboration among stakeholders. Additionally, FEMA's contingency planning efforts prioritize community engagement and participation to ensure that response plans are tailored to the specific needs and vulnerabilities of affected populations. This includes engaging with community leaders, local organizations, and at-risk groups to gather input, raise awareness, and facilitate preparedness activities. By involving stakeholders in the planning process, FEMA seeks to enhance the effectiveness and legitimacy of response efforts and build community resilience to extreme events. Furthermore, FEMA's contingency plans for extreme scenarios encompass a range of response strategies, including evacuation, sheltering, medical care, and infrastructure protection. These plans are designed to be flexible and adaptable to evolving circumstances, allowing for rapid adjustment and deployment of resources as needed. However, the effectiveness of these plans relies on factors such as early warning systems, robust communication networks, and timely coordination among response agencies. Number six, limited public awareness campaigns. FEMA's efforts to educate the public about disaster preparedness and response are vital for ensuring community resilience. However, there are notable gaps in public awareness campaigns that leave many Americans uninformed or underprepared for emergencies. These limitations stem from various factors, including insufficient funding, ineffective communication strategies, and competing priorities within the agency. One challenge is the limited reach of FEMA's public awareness campaigns, particularly among vulnerable and marginalized populations. Despite efforts to disseminate information through traditional and digital media channels, certain demographic groups may still lack access to critical information due to socioeconomic barriers, language barriers, or limited internet connectivity. As a result, these communities may be disproportionately affected by disasters and less equipped to respond effectively. Moreover, the effectiveness of FEMA's outreach efforts is hindered by competing messages and information overload in the media landscape. In an age of information abundance, it can be challenging for FEMA to cut through the noise and capture the attention of the public amidst competing priorities and distractions. This poses a significant barrier to raising awareness and motivating individuals to take proactive steps towards disaster preparedness. Additionally, FEMA's public awareness campaigns may suffer from a lack of sustained funding and resources. While the agency recognizes the importance of education and outreach, budget constraints and shifting priorities may limit the scope and frequency of awareness initiatives. As a result, 
there may be gaps in coverage and consistency in messaging, reducing the effectiveness of FEMA's efforts to engage and empower the public. Furthermore, the complexity of disaster preparedness and response topics may pose challenges in effectively communicating key messages to the public. Concepts such as evacuation routes, emergency supplies, and shelter-in-place protocols require clear and accessible explanations to ensure understanding and compliance. However, conveying this information in a concise and engaging manner can be difficult, particularly for individuals with limited literacy or numeracy skills. Addressing the limitations of FEMA's public awareness campaigns requires a multifaceted approach that includes targeted outreach, collaboration with community-based organizations, and innovative communication strategies. By identifying and addressing barriers to access and understanding, FEMA can enhance the effectiveness of its education efforts and empower individuals to take proactive measures to protect themselves and their communities during emergencies.